Are you looking to add more functionality to your uh, DMR radio, whether it's the OpenGD77 or one of the Baofengs that's supported by OpenGD77? Uh, most of the time, I, I want to pull my hair out when I'm trying to install it, so I figured I'd make a video. Stick around, and I'll show you exactly how to get it going. You're going to love it. Hello, uh, I have the Radioddity GD77. This is an amateur radio. If you're on radioddity.com, you can go to Consumer Radios, Amateur Radios, and it's the GD77. This is a DMR, digital mode radio. Um, it's an amateur radio. You need a license to use it, at least to transmit with it. You can receive all you want. Uh, and, it, and it allows me to operate on analog uh, repeater towers locally as well as digital ones that then I can integrate through the internet into talk groups and be able to talk to people all around the world uh, utilizing a local repeater, whether that's in my house or a repeater tower around here and talk to people all around the world. So it's a really, really cool feature. Uh, really, really nice radio for the money, uh, $90. You know, to, to get another DMR that's uh, an upgrade, I would go with one of the Anytones. I think it's the 878, but that's, that's you're looking at $230. So to get more functionality out of this, obviously you can update your firmware. The way you update your firmware through the Radioddity site is you go to support Radioddity. And then you click on your radio. So whether you have the GD77 or the GD77S, that's just without the screen, you click on it and you can get the firmware. And that's great. And if you're looking for text messaging, I'll tell you right now, as of right now, the uh, the open GD77 firmware, which I'm about to talk about, does not support text messaging. So if you want text messaging, SMX, SMS messaging, you got to stick with the firmware from Radioddity. I don't think there's any other source for that. But if you're looking for a lot more functionality out of your radio and you're okay not having the text messaging, and like I said, check the sources that I'm providing today because by the time you're watching this, maybe it will support the text messaging. But if you're looking for more support, you want to have more control, a little bit more memory, be able to organize it in a little bit more meaningful way, then please check out OpenGD77. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. Now, the big thing with OpenGD77 firmware compared to this firmware, um, it does give you a lot more functionality. But when I go to install it every time, whenever there's an update, I completely forget and it takes forever to find it. And so I wanted to make this video because I see a lot of questions asking, what do I do? Well, this is what you do. So what we start off with is we go to the GitHub of Roger Clark Melbourne, and I will give the link below, okay? Then you're going to see under his overview of the popular repositories as of today, OpenGD77 is listed and Radioddity GD77 CPS. We can ignore that one. We're gonna go right here. So we click OpenGD77. Then what I end up doing is I start clicking in here because I think, oh, it'll be in the firmware. No, this is for developers and I don't use GitHub. I, I'm sure I could figure it out, but I don't have time right now to figure it out. The, there are two major things that you need to find in this page. You scroll down and it says user guide. You want to open up this user guide. So I'm going to open that right over here. Then you want to scroll up and you want to click on releases. This will show you the, the most recent releases of the firmware. Now there's one in pre-release, which I'm actually using. I guess all of them are pre-release. Okay, so maybe they don't change those. So I use the newest one. I think they're great. Uh, this one was released yesterday as of making this video. What you wanna do is you wanna scroll down. You can see all the things that they fixed in the recent firmware and scroll down and it says assets. You're going to download the one for your radio. Now let me go over and show you which radios are supported. So now I'm in that user guide that I told you to open up. And it says variations. So there it it supports the GD77. It supports the GD77S. I, apparently it supports the Baofeng DM1801, the DM860, and the RD5R as well as DM5R. Now I don't, I don't have those radios and I haven't used those radios. I haven't even used the GD77S, all right? But if you've got any of those radios, Go for it. A nice thing about this firmware is it can make uh, in in connection with a Raspberry Pi. I don't know if it works with other types. You can actually make your 
your GD77, GD77S, or any of those bow phones, I believe, um, into a hotspot. So then you're making your own repeater in your house. So let's move forward. So this is the user guide. First, let's go back to these releases. You download your whichever uh, whichever one you're going to use. Me, it will be GD77, SGL, that's my firmware. If I had the S, I'd do this one. If I had the RD5R or the 1801, I would download those, okay? You could definitely download the firmware loader. Uh, I use the one built into the CPS. So you're gonna download that. Then you go back to the user guide <clears throat> and you'll see right here, download links and other resources. Now, I guess there's a link straight there to that releases section. Then you want to download the CPS. This is the software that's going to run uh, that you're going to program your entire radio in. So you'll click on this and it shows you the releases. Same thing, you click on assets and you download that installer. Okay. All right. So we'll be back in just a second. So now that you've installed the CPS and you downloaded the firmware, what you want to do is, first of all, you're going to plug your your uh, your radio in, and I actually don't have a, a, an available USB port right now, but take your, uh, your cable, the cable that actually works, don't mix it up with another cable because it will probably not work then, right? So I have my GD77, so I'm going to use my Radiodity cable that came with my GD77 or order a new one. On the GD77, we press the blue and the black button. So we're going to hold those down and we're going to turn it on. You'll notice the screen doesn't turn on and the green light comes on. That means it's ready for firmware. Okay. Then obviously you could, you'd have it plugged in. All right. Then on the screen, what we're going to do is we are going to go to extras firmware loader and you are going to choose the firmware. So in this case, I would say open GD77 and it would upload it to your radio. Now my radio is not connected. Okay. I, I don't have, I have a microphone and a camera and, and a mouse plugged in. So I don't have an open USB, but it will load it onto your, uh, onto your radio Then turn it off and you can unplug it, but turn it off, turn it back on. And then your next step would be, you want to read from the radio. So you click read and then you're going to save that file. Okay, it's going to, to load everything in and you're going to click save. All right. And then you're going to build your your uh, your code plug off of that and you should be all set. I will make another video shortly on how to actually program these, how to set them up, how to get the information in there. So hopefully that helped. I uh, I tend to update mine as whenever a new updated version comes and I really, really hope that they can get the, the text messaging going. But honestly, I, I love this firmware so much better than the firmware from Radiodity, other than if you need the, the SMS or if you're not really a power user, you're, you're just looking for something to sort of work. But I think it's getting to the point where this the OpenGD77 is, is more user friendly than the one from Radiodity. So hopefully that helps. Hopefully, uh, you know, if you have any questions, ask below in the comments, or you can go to the OpenGD77 forum and I'll put the, the link below and maybe you'll find some more information. Have a wonderful day, everybody.